And welcome back to the D. Armstrong Show. Now, she is one of the powerful young voices of the Republican Party. She's a political columnist and actually an award-winning blogger. And she headlines a group of nationally accomplished speakers who are coming to Columbus State University for the 7th Annual Women's Leadership Conference, which is March 15th and 16th. Joining me on the telephone this afternoon is Megan McCain. Thank you so much for uh, giving us this time and being with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. First, personally, I'd like to know, what was it like growing up as the daughter of the powerful John McCain? Um, you know, I had a really normal childhood. I never think about anything being different in any way. And um, just, uh, now there were obviously small things, like my father being parodied on Saturday Night Live and having security, but I think like parents did a really good job of doing Possible. Okay. We're just going to ask you to speak up just a little bit so we can hear you a little bit better. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Can you've launched. Yes, that's a little better. Thank you so much. Now, you've launched a, a national movement to kind of redefine Republican stereotypes. What are those stereotypes? And, and, and tell us about that. Um, I think just for me personally, it comes from a very I'm sorry, there's that echo in this phone. I can't hear you. I can only hear myself. Oh. Uh, everything else. Okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? We're, we might I mean, have to. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I guess I'll just do it with the echo if that's easier. Okay. Unfortunately, we, we uh, have lost our connection, our telephone connection. But we want you to know that Megan McCain and a host of other women are going to be at CSU. It's going to be March the 15th and the 16th. And if we can get her back, we'll, we'll get, get, get her back because, as you know, uh, she's big in conservative politics. She's been very controversial on a lot of issues. And um, uh, um, we would love to have you to uh, give you some more information on what's going on at CSU. Uh, and, and in place of that, we're going to tell you, since we have this health theme going on, a story about caffeine. A lot of our kids love to go into not only fast food places, but some of the coffee places and get these, these really, really, really deliciously flavored coffees. Well, there are some doctors, some physicians, some parents who are raising concerns and saying this might not be such a good thing for our kids. Let's take a look at caffeine and our kids. Eight-year-old Lane knows what she likes. Caramel, decaf, frappuccino, no drizzle. Her mom knows what she doesn't like. And it doesn't seem healthy for little kids to have caffeine. But plenty of kids are pouring into coffee shops to order their favorite caffeinated drink. I get the uh, um, caramel macchiato every time. <laughs> Usually I get um, a double chocolate chip uh, frappuccino. Forget the milk and cookies. More and more kids are craving coffee. A lot of children, young adolescents, junior high or high school, will walk by a Starbucks on the way to or from school, pick up a venti latte, a venti cappuccino, a venti mocha, and drink it on a regular basis every day. But the coffee craze is far from healthy. Caffeine is a nervous system stimulant and it's addictive. And the other thing that I'm concerned about is overdosing of caffeine for kids because clearly you can overdose both taking these um, large caffeinated coffee drinks plus the energy drinks that are now available with added caffeine. Symptoms of a caffeine overdose include a racing heartbeat, shaky hands, and nausea. Research shows caffeine can also disrupt children's sleep patterns. It's not just the caffeine that's a concern. Doctors say they're worried about those extra calories, too. This tall Java chip frappuccino from Starbucks has nearly 300 calories. Usually those drinks are highly sweetened and, and highly caloric. And the body, with liquid calories, doesn't tend to engage the fullness mechanism. So a kid can have a 300 to 400 calorie, highly sweetened, highly caffeinated drink and not feel three to 400 calories full, be like, okay, now it's time for lunch. Just another reason why 11-year-old Casey's mom is buying her juice instead of coffee. She's convinced caffeine in kids is not a good blend. Oh, what flavor? Um, 
Mm, but did you see the first mom? She asked uh, her daughter if she wanted it, even though she felt like her daughter shouldn't have it. So, you know, as parents, we've got to take control. do want to let you know that we found out what happened with Megan. It was one of those can you hear me now moments. She was on her cell phone and we lost the signal. So if we can get that back before the 15th, we'll do that for you. You know, if you'd like to know more about caffeine, there is a wealth of information. If you just go to FDA.gov and then uh, plug in caffeine, you'll get some information on what the government is saying about allowing your children to drink all that coffee. You know, last week I talked right here in this chair with the sexy Mr. Blair Underwood. Oh my goodness. Found out his wife's name is Desiree, just like me, but I didn't tell him. But anyway, okay. He's such a nice guy. He is married. He has three kids and has just done a really good body of work as far as films go. Well, he's back after a couple of months off of television. The event comes back to NBC tonight and this time they're going to let us know what the event is. Mark Barger has a preview. I just wanted to protect you so no one would find out what you really were. What am I? Plenty of questions. Why are you here? And a few more answers tonight as the event returns. There's huge secrets revealed, which is very exciting. The conspiracy drama took a break back in December. They're sending a message home. And now as the show returns... You lied to me, Mr. President. Virginia Madsen joins the cast. I am coming on the show basically to blackmail the President of the United States. But when it comes to playing hardball... You'll stop talking if I tell you who the Anastronka prisoners are? That's right. This is definitely a woman who is very comfortable with power. It appears Madsen will be taking a back seat to the aliens. If you knew what will happen once my people come here, you'd beg me to do this. The President is going to understand very definitively what Sophia's uh, people want. And so will Jason Ritter's character. Hello, Sean. Heard a lot about you. He's trying to maintain his ideals and his, his moral code, but it's getting harder and harder to do so. The stage is being set. They need to be stopped, and you're going to help me stop them. For a lively second half of the season. What is there not to look forward to? Mark Barger. NBC News. Time, the event, what a cast. And still to come, you know, what are some of the best foods that we need to be eating? We're going to have music from Jim Patrick, and we'll get into shape with Snap Fitness next on the D. Armstrong Show.